This video is going to show you how to solve the electrostatic net force on point charges using Coulomb's law for charges. Here's a general outline of the solution steps that we're going to take. Four steps. The first step, we're going to determine the directions of the forces that act on the particle in question. We'll do this using our basic rule of opposite charges attract, like charges repel, to determine the directions. Then we'll determine the magnitude of the force, just using Coulomb's law without any pluses or minuses. The app, we're taking the absolute value of Coulomb's law to determine the magnitude, because we've already figured out the, the directions in step one, which is the value of the pluses and minuses. Step three will sum up the forces in the x direction and the y directions, just like we did with Newton's laws. In the final step, we'll combine our net forces in the x and y directions using Pythagorean's theorem and trigonometry to get our final answer, its magnitude and direction. This is the same thing we did with Newton's laws. We also did it when we were talking about projectile motion, looking at the impact velocity and the impact velocity's angle same steps. So here's my example problem. I'm going to find the net force on particle A. That's the one in the top left hand corner. And there are the charges in red. So they're all listed out. You can see the blue ones are positive and the red one is negative. The A and B charges are 6.55 microns apart. The A and the C charges are 4.11 microns apart. C is repelling A so that's why my force goes up. It's pushing C upwards because they're the same charge. B is attracting A, so it's pulling A towards B. That's my F, A, B. And they're opposite charges. That's why it's pulling it that way. Now it's time to use Coulomb's law. So I have step one. That's the directions. Time to use the, find the magnitude using Coulomb's law, K, Q1, Q2 over R squared. So I'll take my formula, F, A, C, is equal to uh, Coulomb's constant, 8.99 times to the 9, times the charge of one particle, times the charge of the other particle, divided by the distance between them. It's 4.11 times 10 to the negative 6 meters. The negative 6 comes from the micron symbol. That means times 10 to the negative 6. Then I'll do a little bit of math. I get 1.226 times 10 to the negative 16 newtons as the force between A and C. I'll do the same process for the forces between A and B. Coulomb's constant, but notice that I dropped the negative sign. It just became 4.8 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs times 3.2 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. No negative sign because I just need the magnitude of the force between them. And of course, divided by the distance, 6.55, my mu symbol, 10 to the minus 6. And that gives me an answer of 3.2186 uh, times 10 to the negative 17 newtons. So now I'm done with Coulomb's law. I've got my some of the forces in the x direction. I've summed up the forces in the y direction. I only have two forces, and they are in the x and y direction, so that's easy enough to do. And then what I'll do is I'll make my resultant triangle with my horizontal and vertical force, which would be the sum of the forces in the x, sum of the forces in the y direction. Make my triangle. My hypotenuse is the net force, and the angle is down where the tails all meet. So I'll take AC and slide it down for the vertical, because that's the only force I have in the vertical. I'll take AB and slide that down in the horizontal, because that's the only force I have in the horizontal. If I had more forces in the horizontal or the vertical direction, just like Newton's laws, I would sum up the forces in the x direction and sum up all the forces in the y direction to figure out what my answer is going to be. Now I use trig and geometry to figure out the final answer. Pythagorean's theorem to find the magnitude and a little bit of trig to find the angle. And I get 1.27 times 10 to the negative 16 newtons and 75.29 degrees with the horizontal.